Um, our next guest is a native of Cameroon, West Africa. He's uh, a man of God here to talk about seven pillars of Christianity. Please welcome Dr. William Ekanti, right? Ekanti. Ekanti. That's right. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I, I, I'm sitting here looking at some of the things that you were dealing with and you've been over here for a little while and um, God has blessed you to pen this book called The Seven Pillars of Christianity. Talk to our viewers a little bit about who you are and let's get into this book. First I want to thank you for the privilege you've given me to come on your show. <clears throat> um, I was born originally in Cameroon and spent uh, my later years, the 20s and 30s, in America studying. Mm. Um, God gave me grace to be able to read for the first degree, two masters and a PhD from Syracuse University. Okay. And uh, when I came back to this country, because I returned to Cameroon after I graduated, um, I thought I would serve God there and stay there, but God had other plans. He brought me back here. And, after teaching in Grambling State University for about two years, I sent the call of God in my life to resign from my teaching post as an associate professor and become a classroom teacher in the church. Okay. And that's how I got my calling okay. and came to Atlanta. Okay. So you're here now. Uh, your church is uh, in Estelle, Georgia, uh, New Life Fellowship. Uh, church global ministries, global yes. ministries yes. in Estelle Georgia how has that been being called to do the work of the Lord and actually starting something new that you've done with your wife how is that working um, for anybody to be called into full-time Christian service is the greatest privilege and, honor. Mm. and I have a very supportive wife and children uh, when I told them that God had called me into Christian service, they all said, yes, mm. this is the way to go. So I have a very supportive family. Mm. Uh, and we thank God that he's called us into this vineyard in Atlanta. Okay, okay. Um, and, of course, talking about how important family is and what God will have for us to, to do to be a family man. And of course, so you bring you brought your family with you this evening. And yes, that's, my, that, that's a great thing. Yes, my family is always with me. They are very supportive of everything I do. In fact, I put family before ministry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's good when you have a vision, and that everybody's on the same page of the vision that God has given you. It makes working for the kingdom a little bit easier, doesn't it? Wonderful. Yes. Well yes, said. Yes. Talk to us about seven pillars of Christianity. There are two driving forces that motivated me to write this book. Having had the experience of serving the Lord in Africa, mm -hmm. in Europe, and in America, I discovered from a cursory observation that people are lukewarm about the Bible, and about Christian things. But this brief observation of mine was buttressed by research done by the Banner Research Group. Okay. They did a survey of American churches in 2010. Mm -hmm. And that survey came out with very bleak results of the trends of the church. Mm. Let me just mention a few, and many of them are found in the book. Um, one of the trends was that the body of Christ is gradually growing into um, a biblical illiteracy. Okay. People don't take the Bible seriously. They ignore scripture. The children who exist now in the churches, many of them don't even talk to their friends about their belief, mm -hmm. as opposed to the children of yesteryears. <clears throat> uh, the typical mindset in the church now is to accommodate everything. Let's have tolerance. If you believe what you believe, and I believe what I believe, 
it's fine with me. Mm -hmm. But when I look at scripture very closely, I find out that the Bible is the authoritative word of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible carries the mind of God, the will of God, the purpose of God for us and for mankind. Mm -hmm. The Bible is God's self-revealed will to us. And so, if people ignore this, especially in the church, it's troubling. The psalmist said, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? The righteous here being you and I, who have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And the answer is very simple. All we need to do is to regroup, come together, and rebuild those foundations. Mm -hmm. You know as well as I do that Jesus Christ, according to 1 Corinthians 3.11, is the only foundation. There can be no other foundation. Right. But God opened my eyes in a wonderful way when he showed me Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. Only those two verses. Okay. They carry this, what I, call, I consider the seven pillars. Okay. And guess what? The first pillar is Jesus Christ himself. Right. And then we have the others. Repentance from dead works. Uh, faith mm -hmm. in God. Uh, baptisms. The power of laying on of hands. Mm -hmm. The resurrection of the dead. And eternal judgments. My book discusses the five eternal judgments. This book is for me so important because it helps to build the foundation. Okay. This book comes from two perspectives. It comes from an instructional perspective and from a scholarly perspective. Okay. It is actually a research manual. Okay. It is also a book that when you read will give you the tools necessary to affirm yourself in your faith. Those tools are given in the first chapter. Okay. Those same tools can be used to defend your faith. And so, as an instructional manual, it gives you the three dimensions that we measure all pieces of instruction. You know I have a PhD in instructional technology. Every piece of instruction that is worth its salt mm -hmm. must be effective, it must be efficient, and it must be appealing. Hold that right there. We're going to come back and we're going to talk more about being effective. We're going to talk about what you were saying in your book. Um, there's a couple of things that we want to talk about right now.